Hello everyone, this is Heiko from TokMG and today I'm bringing you another box opening with our nice friend Garrick. Have you seen this badass? Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? This is uh, one box of the new core set, M15 and I, I just came home from work actually where we opened a whole bunch of these and I gotta tell you, I'm pretty excited about this set. So I'm gonna go right ahead and start opening this and then we can talk about what's in this and what makes it so awesome. This is definitely one of the best corsets I want to say that we've ever had and I'm not even overstating this, I feel like, like it's really a very well made set. It's well marketed too, like Garruk being the, the main character for this set I think is pretty cool. They, they did some nice promotions again at the pre-release where you can even fight him in his, in his planeswalker form and um, I actually just tweeted with our official TokyoMG uh, Twitter account uh, the other day I, I tweeted a picture of somebody who went uh, through Shibuya, which is one of the, the busiest and biggest train stations, not only in Japan, but all over the world, where they had um, pictures of Garruk and um, using it as advertisement for uh, Duels of the Planeswalkers. So yeah, uh, Wizards is really doing all their best to promote magic and I think we can really be thankful for that because it brings new people into the game and all these awesome sets they make for us, I think they're re doing a really good job. But anyways, let's get right into it. I'm gonna start opening. And again, as always, if you've seen my other videos, I'm gonna go through these uh, with you. And we start with a very nice first rare, Hushwing Griff. It's a 2-1 two, for 2, uh, for 3 mana. It has flying and flash. And when it enters, uh, as long as it's... Um, on the battlefield, other creatures don't trigger abilities when they enter the battlefield. So that's definitely what we call a hate bear. It basically um, stops other things from happening and so it, it prevents other people from doing their stuff and it's uh, a really good at that too. I think it's gonna see quite a bit of impact in modern. And we have another card here in this pack that I want to point out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and point out some, some uncommons and commons I think are really good. And Solar Artifact. Uh, it, it's an enchantment that turns uh, the enchanted um, artifact into a 5-5 creature, uh, which is basically reminiscent of um, Tesseret, Agent of Bolas' ability, who did that as a planeswalker. And this has been our best-selling card in the whole pre-sales that we did. We've been doing pre-sales for about two weeks, and this card has sold better than any common, better than any uncommon, better than any rare. It's pretty impressive. Like we, we started the price at 30 yen, which I knew was, was low, and then um, it just went up and up and up because we just couldn't keep it in stock. We, so we, we went to 50, we went to 70, and we went to 90. And by the way, 90 yen, that's about 90 US dollar cents, so you get a good idea. And yeah, it's just like, at, at one point it was like 150 and people just kept buying it because I, I think they just want this card for Legacy or for, for Modern even. It's, it's a really impressive card for 2 mana, it's super efficient. Okay, next pack. We have our first Japanese foil. Unfortunately, just a, a common that's pro mostly good in draft. And uh, Siege Dragon, yeah, also not the best. It's uh, one of the the promos for this set. It's um, I don't honestly know exactly what it does. I, it's just too weak for any kind of constructed format. Um, it like does destroy walls and stuff like that, I think. But, <clears throat> yeah, um, as I've explained before, if you've seen some of my other videos, or maybe if not, I'm just gonna say it again. Um, the rare is always in the front of the pack in Japanese packs, so I don't have to flip through everything, so we're gonna find these right away. Uh, Indulgent Tormentor is another of the um, the promo rares, but this one I think is slightly better. It's a 5-3-5. It's uh, flying, and at the beginning of your upkeep, your opponent, uh, you choose an opponent, and that opponent uh, sacrifices a creature or loses three life, or uh, pays three life, and if they don't, you draw a card. So this always generates an advantage for you, which I think when I first saw the card, I thought it was pretty good. But I don't know, like the the presale prices and them not selling much at all, kind of show that maybe I was wrong. I don't know. Like maybe you can tell me in the comments what you think about that card. And we have an emblem uh, of a Johnny. Maybe I hope I hope to open an Johnny because it's a pretty cool card. And the emblems for the planeswalkers are usually pretty rare, so I always like opening those too. Um, Pre-eminent captain, 
one of the nicer reprints that we have in this set. First strike, two, uh, three mana, two, two. And um, when he attacks, you can uh, reveal another soldier card from your hand and put it into play tapped and attacking. So that's a fairly decent one too that they reprinted there. This is, by the way, um, one of the funniest cards I think they printed in the set. It's called Hot Soup. And, I mean, you know, that's exactly what the guy is carrying as an equipment. I honestly don't know what to think about that card. I I think it's kind of funny, but maybe it's going slightly too far, if you ask me, like with the humor. I don't know. Um, so, what else is there in M M15? Uh, there's something that's, that might be unusual and um, might take some time to get used to for the the people that have been playing for a bit longer among us. Here's another dragon that's only a bulk rare basically. It's uh, 5 mana, 4 for flying and um, it brings an artifact with itself when it enters the battlefield. Um, yeah, so one thing that's been changing again uh, for the first time since 8th edition, which is quite a while ago if you think about it, um, the frame has changed. Uh, you can see it's become slightly thinner and on the bottom it curves into the bottom of the card like this and also the rares have this watermark I, I don't know if you can see this on the camera but it's this shiny foily watermark with the planeswalker symbol in it actually that's um, supposed to protect against uh, counter fights uh, which is which which makes a lot of, a lot of sense in uh, these days I think because there's been some some real issues with the, the Chinese fakes as I like to call them uh, apparently People in, in China try to print fakes and try to sell them on the second market, secondary market, and they've been pretty. They they were actually pretty good fakes, and so people were slightly scared about that. But yeah, I mean, Wizards is showing that they're aware of this and they're trying to fight the the problem. And this is this is one of the ways how they're doing it. And I, I I gotta say I personally really like the new frame, for for a couple reasons. First of all, because I think counter fighting is okay. Um, I'm just gonna stop here. Uh, first foil Japanese rare, Mass Calcify. It uh, is a sorcery for 7 mana that destroys all non-white creatures. Honestly, I would have hoped for a slightly better Japanese foil in this box, but I guess I'm gonna take it. It's not the worst ever. And then we have one of the new legendary cycle, Jalira. Also not the necessarily best card ever, but it's definitely cool. And here we have a, another of the cool reprints. Uh, Illusory Angel. I think this one is, is quite the card. It was printed in the, I think, Plane Chase product for the first time. It's a 4-4 four, four Angel for 3 mana. Uh, it flies and um, you can only cast it when you already cast another, spells, uh, another spell this turn. Yeah, um, so this is a card that I think is really strong. By the way, here we have a uh, Elfish Mystic, staple of any green deck. Another really strong card in this set. Uh, I, I think the Angel is gonna have to see some play, right? Uh, it's I mean it's a it's been slightly okay in, in Legacy. It's just like good in cubes and all that kind of stuff. Like it feels really strong for for standard, if you ask me. Our first Mythic rare, uh, the Chain Veil. This is the the Chain Veil that's. Um, part of the story, that's that's why it's mythic rare if you look at this. This is basically the artifact that uh, Liliana of the Whale, the Black Planeswalker, is after and, and that she's been using f for great power. And this is what she, she actually used to curse Garrick to make him look like this, like this super badass. Uh, he used to be green, now he's green-black and he's cursed and that's why he's kind of a, a bad guy now. So um, this legendary artifact costs 4 mana and um, if you don't control planeswalkers it deals damage to you so it, it really wants you to use planeswalkers because it's cursed after all so it makes sense that it does damage to you I guess and uh, for 4 mana and tap you can reuse your planeswalkers for the turn so to speak like it, it basically allows you to to use planeswalkers twice so it's definitely a really strong ability I don't know honestly if it's good enough for constructed I, I feel like we could see something like the super friend stack or something maybe where, where you can just use like three planeswalkers again on the same turn, which is obviously insane, but maybe that's just a, l a little too much of wishful thinking. Here's another really nice rare, uh, Sliver Hive. 
it adds mana to your mana pool uh, that's colored that you can use for sliver spells or um, for five mana and tapping it it uh, lets you create a sliver creature token. Uh, the slivers in this set, they're not too plentiful, but I kind of like that they, they're back a second time after M14. And um, as you can see on this picture too, they, they went back to the to the style of like the, the old school slivers more, like the art style. I, I gotta say I like that, like they listened to the players who complained a lot about the new slivers looking too human-like. So, I don't know, like, I'm, I mean I'm, I'm, bi I'm a bit of an old school player, I've been playing for a long time, and I used to play uh, sliver decks back in middle school or something like that, so yeah, um, maybe I'm biased, but I gotta say I, I, li I like the old sliver style. Another junk rare, and here's one of the, the uncommon slivers by the way. Grants all your slivers death touch, pretty cool. And this is also one. So yeah, like they still look more human-like than back in the day, but it's, it's definitely more also like alien, animal-like kind of style. There's a really a lot of really cool tokens of this set in this set by the way if you ask me like I, I think this dragon looks super badass and there's some other ones like there seems to be a lot of token producers and stuff in this set <coughs> yeah for example like the what is this called in English uh, squid out I think like the squid token looks pretty badass too I think uh, first of the soul cycle interesting. Uh, to talk about for sure. So the souls are a cycle of five mythic rares, actually six, one in every color and uh, an artifact one, colorless one, and they're kind of remin reminiscent of the the titan cycle back from like M11, M12, uh, except that they're not as insanely strong because, I mean, let's be honest, the, the titans were just ridiculous back in the day. Uh, this one in particular is 6-6 um, six, six for six mana f with first strike. And basically, uh, its ability for five mana is like a like a blazing. Uh, what is it called? I don't remember. Like the the card that that's the spell that also does this. Like it, it deals three damage to a player and three damage to a creature. And um, all the souls have the same way. The same ability. They, you can either activate it while they're in play, or you can reuse the ability from the graveyard once. Um, so yeah, I I don't know. Uh, like there's been a lot of talk about the souls and whether they're really strong or whether they're not so strong and uh, judging from our pre-sales people are not really into them too much like we we kept pricing them down and they just haven't sold much at all like some of them like especially the blue and the green one are already at bulk prices almost and um, i don't know like i i talked to some pro players because you know here in japan we have a lot of pro players uh, like especially in Tokyo that you can interact with and I actually asked um, Kenji Tsumura at the pre-release um, well, what he thinks of the souls and because I obviously respect his opinion as a as a famous player and he he mentioned that he kinda likes the black one but that's the extent of what he said and uh, yeah I don't know maybe something comes of that maybe the black one like I personally also like the black one and the red one kind of but I really don't know uh, another Japanese foil we have here. This one is not too bad. It's a common. It's a uh, negate. It's always a useful spell. So I, I think this is slightly nice. And um, our first land, Shivan Reef. Um, yeah, uh, my first box I ever opened as a as a player. Excuse me, when I when I become a little bit nostalgic here. But my first box I ever opened was uh, Apocalypse. So I actually remember opening these lands in their original like first printing. And I gotta say, I'm, I, I really like that these shock lands, uh, not shock lands, excuse me, pain lands are back. Because I think um, they're pretty interesting. And even though they've been printed, like, people always like to say, well, they've been printed so many times. But you gotta realize they've been printed in uh, Apocalypse, in uh, 9th edition, and 10th edition. Is I hope I'm correct. Maybe they're also in 8th edition. I'm not entirely sure about that. But it's been like three, three or four times. But. Those were all sets when Magic was still smaller in scope than it is today. So even though there's been quite a bit of these out there, it's not like there's like an insane amount of them. It's just like, like you know, like uh, Innistrad and, and Ravnica, like there's been so many more cards printed, we all know that. And just because something was printed several times in an old set doesn't mean that there's like an infinite supply out there. So yeah, I really like that new people, new players get a chance. To, to get a hold of these and to play with them. Anyway, to move on, um, Avacyn, uh, Guardian Angel I think is her name, she has Flying and Vigilance, she's a 5-4 for 5, and she can 
grant other creatures protection uh, from colors. I don't know about this one to be honest. Like, I really liked Everson in the in the story, in like Everson Restored and all that, the Innistrad story, and they downgraded her to a rare. So I don't know. Like, I I can see why she has to be a rare, and just because of how the set is made up. But come on, she's she's Everson. She's like one of the most badass angel with angels we've had so far. And, like, I understand the logic behind, like, you know, it's probably an earlier, younger version of her before she was really, like, the the super guardian angel of, like, the whole plane. But still, I feel like she deserves to be slightly more mythic than this. Anyway, um, moving on. This is another one of the uncommons. Oh, actually, two in this, bo in, in this pack that I talked about before. We have um, Ulcerate. It's an instant, one black mana. Uh, target creature gets minus mi 3, minus 3, and you lose 3 life. Super efficient spell. I think we're gonna be seeing a lot of this going forward, both in Standard and Modern, maybe even in Legacy, I'm not so sure about that one. But, like, yeah, this spell is just super efficient, it it does very well what it does, and I, I think we're gonna see a lot of this. And the, the same with the uh, Reclamation Sage, 2-1 uh, for 3 mana. When it enters the battlefield, it destroys an artifact or enchantment. Like, we've had this effect similarly before, but not this efficiently, so I really think this is one of the the standout uncommons of this set alongside Ulcerate and the uh, Insol Artifact, like it's just great cards and like that alone makes it worth opening these kind of boxes, you know. Another Painland, Java Mayakos, I love this art. Anthony Waters is just awesome. Like he he's just one of the greatest artists I think in the whole game that we have. Another mythic planeswalker emblem. Let's just hope we actually find the, the planeswalker for that also. Uh, we also have a Dark Seal Serial, another really nice uncommon reprint. It's been a fairly expensive card just because it's an old, old uncommon. Like, Dark Steel was the original set it was printed in. And I don't know, like, it's not the most important card ever, but I like seeing it back. Uh, Return to the Ranks is this card. Um, yeah, it's a sorcery for uh, White, White, and X. And it has uh, Convoke, the returning me mechanic in this set, and you can return uh, creature cards with, uh, like, X creature cards with power to a list from your graveyard to the battlefield. Like, this this really feels like a like a modern-style combo card to me, but, I don't know, maybe... Like, like Wizards is really aware of combos and what to do with them, and so I don't know if they actually print something that makes a really strong deck, but this feels like it has some potential. Like, some crazy guy is gonna build something with some kind of deck with this and gonna rock one tournament, maybe get something banned again, like Sifka did with the, the X deck. And yeah, like like this card has potential, I think. This is another of the, the promos. It's a clone for your own creatures, basically, that you can return and then clone something else. It's not the greatest for, like, Stan or something, but I, f I think it's a pretty cool card. I actually... Gotta say, like I, I don't mind this art, but I really, really love the the pre-release promo art. Like, if you get a chance to look at that, have a look. It's, it's just really cool. All right, and we have a really nice foil here. Like, I, I just kept talking about this card already, and yeah, and Soul Artifact Japanese foil. This is definitely gonna be one of the chase foil uncommons in the set, and I'm really happy to be opening this. We already opened a couple, but this one is just like, I'm, I'm really, really happy to open this. It's awesome, and I'm, I think we can sell it for quite a bit of money. It's going to be worth quite a bit. Uh, here we have another card that's been doing pretty well in our pre-sales. Actually, this one's interesting because it mostly pre-sold to foreigners. For some reason, Japanese people really didn't, don't seem to like this card yet. But, um, yeah, it sold quite a bit. And... Um, like to Europe mostly, and um, what it does is it's a, it's a one one for three, and whenever you draw a card, you put a counter a plus one plus one counter on this, and when it dies, you get a one one creature for every counter it had on it. So like even when this dies, it leaves you with something that's pretty good in your graveyard, uh, uh, in in on the battlefield. So I, I feel like this has potential. Like even I want to almost say like maybe legacy, because you know brainstorm is just one mana and. You play this, you brainstorm, and then you draw a card for the turn before you attack, and it's a 5-5. So, isn't that something? I don't know. It seems like it could be pretty cute. Uh, I also like the uncommons <laughs> in this booster pack, by the way. It's three uh, Convoke uncommons. Like, the white one destroys creatures. 
uh, the black one reanimates creatures and the f the red one of course deals damage. Um, I, I kind of think it's interesting that they brought back Convoke. Uh, it feels to me a little bit like maybe they just brought it back because they had to reprint stuff. I, I don't know if that's true, but I guess sometimes how it feels to me, which is not to say a bad thing at all. I, I just wonder if, if that's how it actually happened. And um, yeah, I mean, they definitely brought back like uh, Court of Calling, the big one. To reprint like that was just worth too much money and so I'm happy that players now get a chance to get their hands on that much cheaper <coughs> this by the way the, the blue spell that I skipped here it, it turns all your uh, all uh, creature of target player into one one frogs I think it's kind of cute although I don't know like they, I, they're really pushing the the blue theme lately of turning stuff into cute animals I don't know how long that's gonna last before people are fed up with it another Japanese foil not too awesome, but still, I mean, it's an invisibility. Somebody might want to play this in EDH, so I'm gonna put it aside and hope I can sell it. Another Mass Calcify. We already had that one. Yeah, um, what I wanted to mention earlier, I'm, I hope I'm not skipping back and forth too much with topics here for you guys, but like, this is kind of how I do these, do these videos. I'm just like, whatever comes to my mind, I'm just gonna rant about and talk about, and I, I hope you guys enjoy this. I've gotten some good feedback, so I hope that's okay. Um, yeah, this guy, Chief Engineer. This one has been selling a lot, a lot to Japanese players. Like, they really love this card. It's uh, a 1 3 for 2 mana, and uh, artifact spells that you cast have Convoke. So you can make them cheaper with creatures that you actually control and play. It's kind of, uh, it kind of rem reminds me of, um, uh, what's this, what was his name? Grand Architect, I want to say, from Scars of Mirrorland. That, um, let you tap creatures for two mana that you could use for artifact spells. So we had this kind of effect before, but this seems almost more efficient just because it's two mana and a one three. But I don't know. Like maybe it could be again in a in a cute combo or something. Definitely looking forward to seeing something like that. So yeah. Um. Okay. Back again to what I was about to say. I uh, what I really like about the frame as somebody who constantly. Uh, goes through piles among piles of cards and sorts them uh, is like the the bottom part how they did that because the collector's number is extremely visible now and they show you that what rarity something is and all that kind of like the, the whole information is just really easy to see easy to read and I really appreciate it because especially like if you ever like try find an, a card that's older that, that's red and try to read the collector's number co compared to this like here I can tell you even through the camera screen is 143 out of 269 and like back in the day when I was sorting red cards I was just going crazy like my eyes would hurt it, it's just it was not very readable so that's definitely one of the biggest improvements they made on these cards Crucible of Fire a card that led many people to speculations about the next set it's um, an enchantment that gives plus three to all dragons you control and like many people have been speculating about Khans of Tark here, the next big set is going to be a dragon set, so I wonder what's up with that. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the next set because I love dragons. Uh, here we have, uh, what is it, like Aggressive Mining, I think is the name. Uh, it's basically red card draw that prevents you from playing uh, lands any further and you have to sack your lands to, to draw cards. It's an interesting take on what red ca can do in the game. And I, I feel like this card might be fringe playable, maybe. Like, it, it has some potential just because it's unique. So, we'll see. Uh, another Sphinx. We always get a Sphinx these days. And honestly, I, I mostly don't bother reading or even knowing what they do because mostly they're just bad. I mean, we had um, Prognostic Sphinx at the PT. That was a cute card, but even then, it's not the best ever. Not the strongest ever. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna, like, it's a goblin that makes goblins that can attack every turn. <laughs> Sorry for making this brief, but I also think this is not the card with the biggest potential ever. Instead, I think this is actually the card that's the, probably the best card in this pack. It's uh, called Quickling. It's a 2-mana, two 2-2, two, two, flying, flash, and when you play it, or when it enters the battlefield, um, you return another creature that you have to your to your hand. So it basically lets you reuse something while at the same time being a super efficient creature. Or like also because it has flash, it, you can save something with it. And I don't know, I, I just like this kind of effect to be honest. Like I, I, I dream about 
reusing my Snapcaster Mage and all that kind of stuff. So, another goblin. Um, this one, to explain him without like actually reading the, the text, basically, at the beginning of your upkeep, he makes a mine, and then you flip a coin, and when you lose the coin, i.e. when he messes up, he's gonna kill himself. <laughs> and if not, then he just stays around, and the mine you can use you can sacrifice it to, to deal two damage to something, so, so he's just, yeah, just like planting bombs around everywhere and messing up potentially. Uh, Incrust, another common Japanese fall, nothing special. Uh, this guy, Onake, is um, a legend that basically lets you activate your artifacts twice, like, like it lets you copy your artifact art activations. So that seems like a nice EA to build if you ask me. Mindslaver two people, stuff like that, seems good. Alright, we're getting close to the end of the box already. And I gotta say I'm slightly disappointed about this box. It's not the best I've seen today by far. Okay, I guess I'm just gonna stop complaining. Nice timing. This is like the best set in this, uh, the best card in this set. It's awesome. Nissa, the World Waker. It's a 5 mana Planeswalker, it starts with 3, lo three loyalty, for a plus 1 it turns your lands, like one of your lands, into a 4-4 four -four creature. For another plus 1 ability, it lets you untap up to 4 forests, which if you ask me is insane, because if you play this with 4 forests in play, and one other land, whatever, it doesn't matter, then you just cast a 1 mana Planeswalker, that's just ridiculous. And then uh, her minus 7, I gotta read this, um, you can search your library for your um, uh, uh, you can search your library for any number of um, basic lands and then um, those become four force also so this, so she basically wakes up the world and yeah this card I mean especially the second plus one it's just super badass uh, it's actually not been selling too hotly like people have been kind of reserved on her just because she's also obviously expensive like she's always been hovering about around the 3000 yen so about $30 mark for us and um, I just heard um, just this morning I heard uh, news from America that um, apparently she started selling and like she jumped from I think like 25 ish in, in most pre-sales to like 30 plus and so people are thinking maybe it's because of Pro Tour testing, and I, I think that's definitely a potential because like this card is just I, I feel it's insane, and we're gonna see a lot of this in the future. And we have another good rare, so yeah, definitely this box just turned so much better with just two packs. Urbrook, which has always been a fan favorite, it's a legendary land that turns all other lands in play into swamps too. So everything can be used black mana, even like your Mishra's factories or whatever, like like your Dark Still Citadels that we have before. Like everything can produce, can produce black mana, and we know how how mana hungry black decks can be. So that's definitely really awesome. And we have another planeswalker. So this has been a good, like a, a couple of good packs. Um, Lidiana has been printed for, I don't even know. Like, I want to say like the fifth time maybe. Is it like? Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. It's been a lot for sure though. Um, so yeah, let's go over her. Um, she's a five mana planeswalker for five. Her plus one. She um, lets target play this card a card. For minus two, you get to tutor, like search the library for a card and put that card on top. Or and for minus eight, you can return all creatures from all graveyards to play under your control. So you just control everybody's board after you made them discard. Like this is this is a card. I, I think the artwork is also just extremely awesome. And she's obviously because we we already looked her at her chain well. She's she's one of the main characters in this story, and. Um, yeah, I think it's it's good to have her back, even though it's so often that she's been printed. But she's super popular, so why not? I mean, print the card more often, make people get the cards that they want. I think that's totally a reasonable strategy for wizards to do. And uh, we have another card that I personally really like, Hornet Queen. She's a 2-2 two, two for 7, which sounds bad to start out with, but she has flying and death touch and she produces 4 one, one death touch flying bees when she comes into play which is obviously just insane like you can block with that you can pump them and attack it's just like it's a super strong EDH card it's extremely cheap right now but I'm sure that's gonna change again in the future once people like buy them up to just put in their decks and play with them the whole time and we have another really really good mythic um, it's 
the colorless soul that I briefly talked about earlier. It's a six mana, six six with trample. Like I could stop there and this would already be a decent card, right? And for five mana, uh, you can give um, permanence, you control indestructible end of, turn, end of turn, and then again you can do the same thing for Major Event by removing it once more. So definitely a really strong card. It's been selling reasonably well for us, and I think this is also going to be a card that we are going to see quite a bit more of. Uh, Aether Spouts. This one, like when I first read this card, I was like, like, wow, guys, what the hell, this card is ridiculous. But turns out it's not exactly as strong as I thought it would be. So it's, it's a 5 mana instant spell, and um, for every attacking creature, that creature's controller chooses to put it either on the bottom or on the top of the library. So you can, like, if you're being attacked by an army, you can return all of it, and, and your opponent has to choose like between two things that are bad for him like put it on the top or put it on the bottom like I when I first read it, I thought it's just like return all creatures which would obviously like be way ridiculous but even this I think is pretty strong so yeah we're getting closer to the end of the box I only have two packs left and I want to use this time again um, before I open these last two beauties hopefully open like a foil rare or mythic or something I want to use the time again to say, as always, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And um, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and spread the word. And um, yeah, we're going to be giving you a lot more content going forward. I uh, currently am editing uh, a couple of, like, 15 in total vintage videos. Like the, the coverage of our... Um, our last vintage instrument that we had here in Tokyo with English commentary so that's something to look forward to and like yeah just more box openings there's gonna be more giveaways in the future if the channel just needs to grow a little bit more so there's more people that get a chance at this so tell your friends subscribe like you know whatever you do on social media I, I know this can be slightly annoying to talk about every time but I just wanna grow the channel and the, the bigger it gets, the more people we have, the more I can do for you guys and the more I can produce content. And I and I enjoy myself doing this, so help me grow the channel and then I'm gonna produce more content. Our second to last rare is um what's his name? Isan, the wandering bard, I think. Uh it's a th two three for three mana, and he's kind of like birthing pot basically. Uh it's just like he takes he's a creature, so that's obviously bad. Uh, compared to the pod and he takes three to activate and tap so that's also not the best but uh, yeah I mean every turn what he does is he gets you one creature that is like one higher and um, like one higher in rank and you can you can tutor for that it's it's a decent card but I don't know like he might make for a good general but maybe not for like a, a, a standard or modern okay last one um we have a black foil on this one. What could it be? Let's go. Ah, <laughs> it's a black common. Who cares? Anyways, um, spirit bonds. This one is also a nice one that has been also designed by uh, another game designer, which has, uh, by the way, been a circle, you know, like a whole um, cycle in, in this. Like I, I forgot to mention this, but Jason, for example, also was designed by somebody else, Brian Fargo. This one, Justin Gary. I think he's a former. Pro Magic player. Um, it's a two mana enchantment, white, and um, whenever a non token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can pay one white mana, and if you do, you can put a 1 1 token into play. And then for two mana and sacrificing this enchantment, uh, this enchantment uh, you choose a creature that is not a spirit, and that's going to be indestructible under the I, I think it's, it's a pretty cool card. Maybe also slightly on the weak side, but that's okay. And here we have a Shrapnel Blast ending the pack on a high note for the uncommons. And that's it. So, yeah, um, this has maybe not been the best box ever, but it turned out to be quite nice because we ended up opening Nisa, which is obviously a really good card that we'd like to open. So let me go through this again one more time. All the rares. Either Spouts, Soul of Mephyrexia, Liliana of the Vale, Burberg, Nisa. Just a couple of really cool cards. Yeah, and then uh, Chief Engineer, uh, Chasm Skulker, Jeremiah Coast, Shivan Reef, The Red Soul, um, Sliver Hive, The Chain Veil, 
and uh, Hushman Griffin. So yeah, overall this box has been reasonable, I want to say. And um, all these cards you can find right now on TokyoMG.com. Go check them out. Japanese non-foils. And we also have a bunch of foils on there, including almost all the Planeswalkers actually. Including the prettiest card in the set. Like, if you haven't seen it yet in Japanese foil, check out our Twitter where I posted a picture just recently. This card in Japanese foil, it's gorgeous. And you can get it right now on TokyoMG.com. Including many of these other cards, non-foil, foil, whatever you like. So yeah, um, again, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out our homepage. Make sure you check out our, uh, the rest on our YouTube channel. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.